On this bonus, Locked on Jayhawks, KU Basketball has another commitment. They're third for the class of 2024 with Rakis Passmore, a four-star small forward. We're discussing his commitment, what it means for KU, what he brings to the table on this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. Free and available wherever you get any of your podcasts. Thank you to all the everydayers out there. Thank you for tuning in to this one because we have a bunch of episodes from today and uh, coming at you throughout this week. And you can also find us on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show first this episode of the show is brought to you by jace medical empower yourself when you purchase the jace case providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections get yours today at jace medical that's j-a-s-e medical.com ku basketball has their third commit in the class of 2024 this time with rakis passmore um great name to begin with and i've talked a little bit about this already that uh you know you have unbelievable names in this class now you have flory badunga it might be badunga um already committed he's you know one of the top recruits in the entire country then you have LeBaron phylon which that's a great name in itself and he's a top 30 recruit and then you add uh rakis passmore who his last name is passmore on the basketball court now i don't know is that technically a bad thing do you want the guy to be passing more right uh, because if he needs to pass more that probably is not a good thing then again if you're you're not wanting him to pass more. I don't, I don't know. Is that is that because he's being too unselfish? I don't know. Whatever. It's a great last name. I don't care. Either way, I'm all about it. So uh, Rakeese Passmore picking KU. He's a four-star small forward. He is uh, basically a top 50 recruit pretty much everywhere you look. Six foot five, 180 to 190 pounds. Uh, uh, depending where you look, you'll see 180, 185, 190 for him. And uh, certainly looks like somebody who can add to his frame because he's kind of a powerful. He is ranked 48th in the country on 24-7 sports. 49th in the country on Rivals, 47th in the country with On3, 52nd in the country with ESPN. And overall on the 24-7 composite, he is ranked 44th. Uh, he picked Kansas, which by the way, that's funny that he's ranked below that on all of those, but the composite, he's up because there are just certain guys that, you know, maybe it's just a, a mystery of who you put 40 and it's just way different on different spots, you know. Uh, but he picked KU over LSU and Oklahoma. Those were the two other finalists. At some point, there were others, including Arkansas, that were in the race. But uh, in the end, it was KU over LSU and Arkansas. He's a big, powerful athlete. He is somebody who can come in and play right away and or be a long-term guy for you. Obviously, in today's day and age with recruiting, if you bring on freshmen and they don't really see the court right away, most often they're going to transfer. So there is that pressure to kind of see the court right away. Not that you know, I would put that on him and you, you hope that certain kids have the wherewithal to go about that, but that's just kind of how it goes nowadays. Uh, but I do think he does have a chance to get on the court early. We'll get to that roster outlook for 2024, his outlook for the team and everything, and uh, get to his scouting report coming up next. First, though, this episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Don't be caught unprepared. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace case is fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians. Get ongoing care from physicians on any treatment-related questions, doctor-created, doctor-recommended. Jace Medical is simple. You go online, fill out a form, and then you get a prescription, life-saving medications right to your door. The Jace case gives you peace of mind that you're not just hoping that you have access to the medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Get $20 on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. I'm more on Rakeese and Passmore picking KU four-star small forward committing to the Jayhawks. So here's the scouting report on Passmore. I mentioned he, uh, you know, at six foot five, you have good size there. You can probably play the two or the three. At six five, 180, you're probably not seeing that guy playing at the four unless you're adding more weight to him. Realistically, he'll be more of a two or three in the lineup and kind of a power two in that way. Like, 
Uh, you think a little bit of like the Wayne Selden mold, I guess, of what you're talking about. I guess the MJ Rice mold, not saying he is those players or will play like those players. I'm just saying in terms of the you have a six foot five kind of shooting guard, small forward type. Uh, this is from Travis Branham of 24 seven sports. This was ahead of his commitment. He wrote this article for, for them in 24 seven sports. Whoever lands Passmore is getting one of the more explosive athletes in the country who is strong can really defend and has consistently been improving his half court skill set, able to make shots from three and get downhill. So explosive, strong athlete um, who really defends. Okay. That seems to work for Bill Self and that he can fine tune the skill set and over time at KU, um, you know, improving his shot from three and getting downhill uh, kind of a guy who you figure can hit the court right away if you can play defense and then the offensive game can kind of come to it. Uh, this was the scouting report given by on three. Rakeese Passmore is a lengthy and highly explosive wing at six foot five. There's talk of him having a 46 inch max vertical jump. When he gets ahead of steam, he attacks the rim with bad intentions. Passmore is much developed as a shooter. The release is high and consistent. He needs to develop creating off the bounce and building consistency, getting the ball into a shot uh, pocket off the live. Passmore has a high-level work ethic, which is evident by his rapid improvement over a short amount of time. He averaged 21 points playing with the Garner Road program on the Adidas 16U circuit. There's massive upside here, and the work is showing to reach his vast ceiling. So pretty much this is what you get with this kid. Uh, you are getting a really good athlete. You are getting a strong athlete, a very bouncy athlete who's going to be a good defender, has the tools to be a good defender because of his length and size and athleticism, but is still fine-tuning the offense, but has shown enough skill there to still be a top 50 recruit. This is the type of kid that you look at and you could look down the road in two, three years, maybe being a top 50 recruit, but not a McDonald's All-American. You know, the expectations maybe won't be to be a one and done or, or maybe to even be a two and done. But this could be a kid you look down the road, whether it's in year two, year three, year four, and you go, yeah, he had all the athleticism in the world, and Bill Self and his staff fine-tuned him, and he turned into an absolute stud. And uh, he fits the mold of, of a team that I know this year it's not going to be as much the case for, for this specific team, but I think Bill Self really liked playing with a bunch of wings when he had Ochag Baji and Christian Brown and Jalen Wilson and, and all these guys that he wants to get back to that. And uh, Rakeese Passmore certainly helps you play that way because he's versatile and where he can specifically play. Are right, we going to continue on roster outlook of 2024? Uh, what's next on the recruiting trail for KU? First, this episode of the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Testing your skills on Prize Picks this football season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. They have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app you can personalize your experience and you can you know just go into nba bet or picks you can go into nfl picks more or less on you know mlb picks right there, there's a lot of different things you can tailor it to your specific need you can pick a minimum of two you can pick a maximum of six you know depending on how much you want to uh, I guess risk with with the kind of odds coming back. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepick.com slash locked on college with code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy with prize picks. I'm right, finishing things up. The 2024 roster outlook and where things are at. Well, as far as the recruiting class now for KU, you have a great recruiting class. Flory Badunga, who is the number one center in the class. LeBaron Phylon is the number three point guard. And now you bring on, um, with Passmore, a top 50 recruit who's pretty consensually a top 15, top 20-ish small forward in the class. This is a great class for KU. If this is where it ends from the freshman point of view, it's still a really good class. And uh, obviously you want to leave yourself some opportunity to, you know, bring in some transfer portal players. Um, like as far as we know, what's next on the recruiting trail, the Cooper flag thing ain't happening. Trey Johnson cut his list to Texas and Baylor. Uh, Liam McNeely is going to commit over the weekend. That would be a big one. If K could land him seems like the consensus is that Indiana is going to be a pick. Who knows? Maybe it's a reverse McKenzie and Buck. He ends up picking Kansas, but it uh, seems like he's going to be going to Indiana. So um, maybe some of the other top tier high school recruits have been taken or, or are going to be going elsewhere that um, maybe you are just fine taking three. And maybe there is another one that that's somewhere along the way that you bring on. And then the rest you, you keep open for the transfer portal uh, right now with Passmore in tow, you would technically have two scholarships um, left 
for next season. And that would be under the assumption that you have 12 scholarship players, but that number can grow. If Hunter Dickinson only uses this one year, that would open up another scholarship. If Zach Clements transfers at the end of the year, that would open up another scholarship. If uh, Johnny Furphy or Marco Jackson or somebody goes pro after this year, or Dewan Harris or KJ Adams skip early on their final season to go, right? Then, then it would open up another scholarship. Um, so you definitely have a lot more scholarships that you can play with here that you can do a lot of things with. As far as where the roster looks, I mean, you could be going in, into the 2024-25 season, a sixth-year Dewan Harris at point guard, you could potentially have a second year on Marco Jackson, or he might be off to the NBA, who knows. And then your other guards would be LeBaron Phylon, who you would be bringing in, and Jamari McDowell. And then at the wing, Kevin McCuller would graduate, so you could be left with a sophomore Johnny Furphy. Uh, at the four, you'd be left with KJ Adams. Furphy could probably play a little 442. And then at the center, you have Badunga, possibly Clements, um, possibly Hunter Dickinson, I guess, in, in the scenario that he does stay for another year. But as we're going through that, there's not – a ton of depth on the wings so you talk about with Passmore if you're going to be um you if, if McCuller graduates and Furphy slides into the starting role at the three-man spot in this scenario okay but you don't really have the backup wing in that standpoint I guess Jamari McDowell can play the two or the three maybe you'd be fighting for minutes with him but Furphy might get some minutes at the four too in addition to the three which means that you could have even more minutes open at the three and if a Marco Jackson goes pro at the end of this year then you're possibly looking at it as like okay uh, you lose Timberlake and Omarco Jackson. You could lose Kevin, or you do lose Kevin McCuller because of graduation. You know, that could be, I don't know, like 80 to 90 minutes per game or that you would just be losing at the two and three positions from this year to next year, which Rakeese Passmore plays those positions. So I think there's a real chance Passmore could come in and, and maybe play a role for this team right away. And then as you're looking long-term, I think the idea is for Furphy to be kind of a two and done. El Marco would be either be a one and done or a two and done. You'd be talking about Passmore being a real player by year two at Kansas if he's not already a role player in year one. And like I said, maybe year two, year three, year four, this is a guy because of his athleticism sticking in the program with Bill Self can break out and be one of those players who, yeah, he's not the, the first round draft pick one and done type of guy. Although with his athleticism, maybe he is one of those guys that's being underrated and undersold there, but um, that he's not the, the guy who goes in and is a lottery pick after year one, but after a couple of years in the program is one of those program guys that we look to and like, yeah, he was an all big 12 player and he ended up being an NBA draft pick after it. It just took him a, an extra year or two. All right. That's going to be for this episode of locked on Jayhawks. Um, we will have more content coming at you. Nick Schwert. We'll join us on tomorrow's show. We have our KU Oklahoma State preview to come. Make sure you're catching all of our podcasts wherever you get any of your podcasts or on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. Have a great rest of your day. See you next time with Locked on Jayhawks.